What a headshot! What a headshot! How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, it's going to be the big one. We're going to be going over my team selection for the upcoming game week one of the FPL 2021 slash 2022 season. So hopefully you guys are as hyped as I am for this upcoming Prem season and I really do think it's going to be a good one. I actually feel sorry for you FPL managers if you started playing FPL last season because that was an absolute all over the place season whereas this season I think it's going to be quite a lot more calm. I'm hoping for not too many cancelled fixtures but the triple game weeks can still stay because those are rather entertaining but as I said probably going to be quite a calm season and hopefully we can go on and get another high finish. So in this video I'm going to take you guys through my own team selection as well as talking about some talking points that relate to it and what you guys should be watching out for for this upcoming week till that Friday night game week one deadline. Now I know you guys are hyped so sit back relax and let's get straight into it. So as I mentioned we're going to be going over some talking points before we go on to the actual draft and if you guys are new to the channel or you simply just forgotten what we do on the Davy FPL channel I wanted to remind you guys about the deadline stream. So what a deadline stream is is basically whatever game week we have I just look at that deadline and then minus 30 minutes to an hour from it and that's where we're probably going to be streaming here on this channel. If there's not too much to talk about we probably will reduce it to a 30 minute stream but if it's going to be like a game week one or a special game week or there's a ton to talk about we'll probably increase that to about an hour before the deadline where i come online answer all your guys questions and we go over the most up-to-date squad as possible and the reason why i'm giving you guys a reminder about the deadline stream is that we will be doing one for game week one and that's where you guys can get the most up-to-date team as physically possible because we'll be going over the last minute injury news and if we do get potential early team news that's where you guys will find it and we can kind of adjust the squad to the news that we do get so we definitely will be doing one for game week one uh, so stay tuned an hour before that friday night deadline come here on the channel it's usually quite a lot of fun i'm pretty sure people down in the comments below will give you enough reviews uh, answer your guys questions on friday i'll hopefully be doing as many draft reviews as i physically can uh, because i know that you guys absolutely love those draft reviews of your own teams and hopefully they're going to be a little bit different to what i'm producing in this video but the main thing about this talking point is just please if you want to get the most up-to-date squad as possible because as you know i post my transfers over on my twitter page at davy fpl if you're not following there but also we do get some injury news some team news usually a couple of minutes before the deadline and that's the way i can react to that news and make the changes that we do require to our own fpl teams so the next talking point i'm going to be going over is the press conferences and the press conferences are the most vital information that you guys are going to get before the deadline of that respective game week. So because we do have a Friday night kickoff, we're probably going to have press conferences on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And what these press conferences are, are basically it's where the manager addresses the media and they tell us about their injury news and potential talking points leading up to that game week. So we can also get some early team news. Maybe a Klopp comes out and says uh, that a Jot is going to start against Norwich instead of a Firmino because Firmino is a little bit tired. We sometimes do get these vital pieces of information and obviously also the injury news. So we saw this current weekend how many players got injured in training so the manager should hopefully tell us who is on the injured list and who could potentially be coming in to those injured players places this sometimes doesn't always happen a pep guardiola the new spurs manager they're usually quite cryptic secretive on their kind of tactics they don't usually tell us who's injured who's back from injury and that sort of thing so just keep your eyes on that one but most managers generally do give us an update on the squad selection. I also wanted to tell you guys that I am recording this video on Sunday night. So I have had all the weekend kind of preseason friendlies. We had the Liverpool game where Robertson has now come off worst and it looks like he might be out for a prolonged amount of time. We also saw Human Son score the goal to beat Arsenal. We had the Villa game that came out with injury news. Oli Watkins getting substituted on the 48th minute, hobbling off the field so he might have a little bit of a knock. Buendia didn't even train yesterday so he wasn't even on the bench for Aston Villa. So these pieces of information are super Super vital to our own team selection because kind of imagine you have a player that you think is essential and then suddenly the manager tells you on Thursday that they're out injured hopefully it will be before the deadline that you manage to find out that piece of information but that's why you guys have to keep your ears open your eyes open especially before the game week one deadline but now going on to the draft as I'm sure all you guys have been long anticipating hopefully you guys didn't skip to this point and I managed to listen to those talking points that I spoke about but nevertheless going on to the draft I've gone for the 3-4-3 formation that you've pretty much seen in every single one of my drafts throughout the preseason so I haven't really changed too much about this team there's one or two selections that I managed to switch around I kind of changed the budget in midfield I downgrade one of my defenders to afford that and the four department has had one specific change 
Starting off with the bench because that's probably the most boring part. We've got Forster here at that 4.0 mark. Now, I don't think he'll start for Watford. I think Bachman is the number one at Watford currently. Uh, but if he does manage to pick up some bad form or maybe an injury, I think that Forster will definitely come in between the sticks. And at 4.0, there's no kind of risk there. Uh, my strategy is always to kind of go set and forget. I don't really like rotating goalkeepers. And that's why I've gone for kind of a 4.5 and a 4.0, spending the least amount of money as possible for my two goalkeepers. Going on to the next three bench options, I've got Ailing. He was my favorite 4.5 option throughout the preseason, and I would recommend that you guys do kind of look at him if you are looking for a 4.5 defender. Underperformed his stats last season, and that's why I think that he could be on for a big season with Leeds in this 2021-2022 Prem season. The 4.5 midfielder I have gone for is Brownhill, just because between him and Pesuma, I think it might be worth kind of taking a punt on Brownhill. For Burnley, might be a little bit more attacking than Pesuma is for Brighton. And at 4.5, he's going to be on my bench most game weeks. And if he does have to come on, might have a slightly higher ceiling than the Brighton midfielder. The last defender we're going to have is Omar Badamadeli from Norwich. A new signing for them at 4.0 million and he actually has been starting for them in the preseason. So I would kind of recommend that you guys do consider him. We have had some news with Robertson potentially being out for a number of weeks now. They actually haven't had the scan yet so just monitor the situation there but I'm pretty sure as soon as we do get the results Liverpool are quite quick with releasing news and if they don't we do have a ton of journalists in and around Liverpool that will give us that updated news. So maybe a player like Atsimikas could be at that 4.0 4.0 mark that's actually going to start for Liverpool as long as uh, Robertson is out but of course we do have James Milner that could also kind of deputize there at that left back position so maybe if Klopp comes out and we see that Simekas is going to be starting you could consider him but just remember if Robertson's injury is not too long and he does manage to come back after about two weeks that's going to block your triple up if you ever want to do it on those Liverpool assets. So as I said, I would recommend the 4.0 Norwich striker, a player like a Menkeo. Unfortunately, I don't think he's gonna be starting for Newcastle. So if you do need a cheap defender on your bench, then he does look like quite a good option. Now going on to the starting 11, because that's what you guys all care about. Uh, starting off in goal, we've gone for Sanchez at 4.5. Throughout the preseason, he's been a consistent option uh, throughout my kind of drafts. And he managed to play in two days ago in that Brighton friendly. So we don't have to worry about any kind of injury concerns. And although Brighton did sign a new goalkeeper, a new young goalkeeper, I don't think he's going to worry Sanchez minutes over the entire season. So Sanchez comes in here nicely. Brighton defense looks quite solid. If they can manage to replicate last season, it uh, should be absolute FPL gold at that price tag. The rest of the defense, we've kind of gone for my two essential defenders. I've mentioned them consistently throughout the preseason. Trent Settings and Arnold, Luke Shaw, great options to go for. The nice thing about Luke Shaw is that he actually played against Everton. So it looks like he's managed to recover from that injury completely. But the bad thing about him is that he is 50% owned in the entire game. Uh, so one of the most highly owned, if not the most highly owned option that you guys can get. So I would definitely recommend going for him, especially at the start of the season, because the fixtures are good, the player is good. So hopefully the FPL returns are also good. Then on to Trent, nothing wrong with him. I know that Robertson now, if he is injured, it obviously hinders that Liverpool defense quite a lot. Van Dijk, we don't really know if he's going to start against Norwich. I personally don't think he will, but I think he definitely will be featuring in the opening couple game weeks, which will be fine. And I mean, Trent is Trent. From an attacking point of view, offers so much going forward that I think at 7.5 million, I still would kind of recommend him, even though that uh, Liverpool defense might take a little bit of a knock with not having their first choice left back. And the final defender in the lineup is going to be Ben White from Arsenal at 4.5 million as well. So you guys are probably looking at this draft and are wondering why I'm starting Ben White, but also having Tony. And I'm just kind of playing the odds there. Hopefully Tony either scores or Arsenal keep a clean sheet either side of there. It's probably going to end 1-1 knowing my luck and Ben White won't get a clean sheet. Tony won't get a goal. And that's going to be a little bit of a heartache for our game week one team. But I do think Ben White over the entire season definitely will be starting for Arteta and at 4.5 million great value for money because Arsenal at the end of last season were looking quite strong defensively. The midfield apartment I'm super excited about. We have managed to make a couple of upgrades. Unfortunately I had to take Buendia out because it does look like he's currently injured but if the Aston Villa manager comes out and says that he will be starting against Watford on the weekend then I will probably bring him back in because I really do love those Aston Villa first three fixtures. But right now the two essential players Mo Salah, Bruno Fernandes, those guys aren't going anywhere. Maybe if Lukaku comes back but the thing about these are kind of transfers that haven't been confirmed yet even the ones that have been confirmed the players aren't really training right now they're kind 
kind of going to be filtered in uh, throughout the opening couple game weeks. Maybe that international break, we're only going to see them after that. The international break does happen after game week three for those of you guys who want to put it in your diary. But the thing about these new transfers, they're not going to be starting game week one. So we can kind of secure our team selections right now, unless there are obviously injuries throughout the preceding week. So Salah, Bruno would recommend those two. You'll see later on in the video, I'm going to be talking about captaincy, where you see I will be kind of rotating between United and Liverpool options in terms of the captaincy within the first six game weeks. I've seen some people consider Sancho, but I definitely wouldn't be going for him because I don't think he'll start game week one. Whereas a Bruno Fernandes scored that goal against Everton off the free kick. So his confidence should hopefully be quite high. And I think he should hopefully have a good season for United with the signings that they have also been making. The next two midfielders are going to be my differentials. It's going to be Harvey Barnes and it's going to be Diego Jota. So Harvey Barnes is the new addition kind of. I saw that he had quite a good game against Man City in the Community Shield. And I personally think that Brendan Rodgers will set up with Harvey Barnes in the starting 11. There's been question marks about it, Ian Nacho. And unfortunately, I do think if Ian Nacho doesn't start, uh, probably Harvey Barnes will take his place. So I'm hoping for not too much rotation there. But I do think Harvey Barnes looking great. Had a great season last season and unfortunately did get injured. Otherwise, I think that he would have been one of the best options at that price point. So 7.0 million for the Leicester winger. I'm perfectly fine with paying that. And hopefully he gets a couple equalizers throughout the season. And the final player in the midfield is Diego Jota. Now he could also become Greenwood. It's kind of a 50-50 for me at the moment because I think that Firmino has the potential to start after getting a couple minutes in preseason. Whereas with a player like a Cavani or Rashford, those players haven't really featured in the preseason. Obviously Rashford getting that surgery. So he's going to be out for a couple of game weeks. So I think that Greenwood could be more of a secured option. But then I think that Liverpool have the better two opening fixtures. And that's why if I'm going to be taking a punt on a 7.5, it's probably going to be on the Diego Jota side of things, unfortunately. So kind of like the midfield we've got our essentials we've got our kind of differentials nice combinations then hopefully these four options end up returning a couple points then going on to the final department which is going to be the forwards my essential forward is going to be Antonio uh, we saw him in the preseason game on the weekend scoring the winning goal for West Ham uh, looks to be in great form at the moment luckily he's not injured if he does get injured we're gonna to have to ship him out quite quickly but as long as he's not injured Antonio will be in my squad because he simply just scores when he plays and that's why I think at 7.5 million could be one of the steals of the season if he manages to stay fit and West Ham looked good last season I know that Jesse Lingard probably played a large part in that but I do still think they kind of can fall that void with players like a Ben Rama, a Bowen. There's enough creativity there for Antonio to convert those chances. Then the new addition to my forward line is going to be Danny Ings that comes in at 8.0 million. Originally, this place was a taken by Ollie Watkins. And not only does he currently have a little bit of a knock, but I think in terms of finishing and in terms of playing in the starting 11, Ings is 100% the option to go for. I don't think they would have paid the amount of money they did for him if he wasn't going to start. So that's why I'm a little bit assured of him starting. And I mean, at 8.0 million with those lovely three opening fixtures, 100% I'm going to be going for him. And hopefully he can return me for that kind of faith. And the final player is going to be Tony. Kind of already touched on him uh, with playing Ben White and Tony. But I think at 6.5 million, you can't really go wrong with him because he's just kind of a nice cheap option. And Brentford usually are quite attacking. And Tony had a great season in the championship last season. So I'm banking on him to score a couple goals. So there are a couple of players here that are essential and are going to be secured, but there are a couple of question marks around others. Harvey Barnes is unfortunately one of those players that I have to be assured of a start in order to keep him because he has some nice upcoming fixtures and I don't really want him to be rotated in the good games. Diego Jota is another one that I am considering maybe downgrading to Rafinha because with Diego Jota, you're basically guaranteeing that you have to transfer him out in the opening couple game weeks when Firmino comes back into the lineup. And although Jota is quite good off the bench and will usually come on the field when the other defense is tired, and that could actually be quite an advantage over the other Liverpool options, I do just think I would rather go for a more nailed option at that kind of price point where he is at. So now going on to the final talking point of the video, and that's going to be captaincy. And basically what I wanted to show you guys here is my captaincy plan for the opening six game weeks. And why I think this is probably one of the most important things that you guys should do is that it allows you to kind of set out the premium assets because I always recommend capturing those premiums instead of the more differential options because they usually offer more should points and offer higher points per games over the entire season. So starting off in game week one, I've gone for Liverpool and that's not going to change at all. I haven't even highlighted another option here. Liverpool against Norwich is going to be the fixture that everyone kind of targets and everyone's probably going to be captaining Mo Salah if they do own him. 
Go on to game week two. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. We've got Burnley for Liverpool and then Southampton away for United. So the thing about Burnley versus Liverpool is that it's always quite a tight game and Burnley love playing against Liverpool at home. You saw last season when they kind of ended that run of home wins for them. So I'm kind of second guessing maybe going for a Mo Salah and I might go for someone like a Bruno Fernandes against Southampton because Southampton's defense last season was simply atrocious and I think that United could score a couple of goals at St. Mary's. Game week three is the one that I'm quite excited for because of Harvey Barnes. Leicester face Norwich and in my opinion Norwich is probably going to be the fixture that we target every single game week and we're kind of looking who plays Norwich and that's probably the advantage of having a Norwich play in your lineup is that you can actually see who they play every single game week without having to look at the fixtures at all. So Harvey Barnes could be a nice little differential, but I probably will go for a more assured option of Bruno Fernandes against Wolves. As my personal opinion, I don't think that Wolves are that great defensively and United uh, should probably win that fixture quite comfortably. Going on to game week five, I think this is probably the only game week that uh, United are the standout captaincy options against Newcastle at home. That's just going to be a thrashing in my opinion. And with Leeds versus Liverpool, this game could either be a repetition of last season's game week one with a 5-4 win for Liverpool, which I don't think any of us will kind of be mad at. But I think this game might be quite close and I think that Leeds will probably look to counter-attack against a strong Liverpool side. Game week four, it's going to be back to Mo Salah against Crystal Palace and I'll be hoping for a 7-0 win here. If you guys remember, Mo Salah came off the bench and managed to get about two goals and one assist if I can remember correctly. So definitely I'll be capturing a Liverpool option against Crystal Palace at home. And in the final game week, a game week six, I'm going to be going for either Liverpool versus Brentford or Bruno Fernandes against Aston Villa. Probably going to be on Mo Salah again, just because I think might be favoring more of a winger than a centre midfielder. But I think against Brentford, this game could be another one where Liverpool should hopefully win quite comfortably and will hopefully be quite an attacking fixture. But as I said, I would highly recommend that you guys do this with your own squads, just so that you can kind of see your premiums and the options that you do have in the opening six game weeks. But this is basically wrapped the video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you knew you have not subscribed yet. I'll be seeing you guys for more videos throughout this week as we lead up to that game week one deadline where I will be seeing you guys for a deadline stream. Please remember that probably the most important thing to take out of this video is that I will be doing a deadline stream and hopefully we'll see you guys there. But I'm going to be signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.